hello, hello. Happy Saturday. Oh my goodness, you guys, I'm a tiny bit freaking out right now. Literally 10 seconds ago, we just had an earthquake. <laughs> and I'm like standing here, just like thinking I was gonna light a candle and then I couldn't find my matches and I'm just standing here, just ready to hit the button. And I'm like, oh my God, everything is shaking. It wasn't a huge one, but it was enough to rattle me. No pun intended. It, is, it was a little bit of like, whoo, Leslie, did you feel it? <laughs> Leslie's like half a mile away from me. Blah, crazy, crazy. Let's see what you said. Oh yeah, I know, I know. I was like, I'm hoping my internet is not gonna get disconnected or my boys don't wake up. <laughs> So anyway, I know you guys probably who don't live in earthquake zones think I'm crazy that I'm laughing about it, but it was just a, it was a minor one, but they always kind of get me because I sometimes think like, hmm, we, is there going to be an earthquake? I don't know. We also have the first real rain we've had in three months, I think. I think it tried to rain last week, not last week, last, well, a couple weeks ago, and I looked out the window, it was literally spitting. That was it, it was just like spit. Um, so we have a lot of rain, I'm very happy, but I'm a little <laughs> freaked out over the earthquake. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna try and get myself together. If for some reason my internet goes down, it's probably a bigger one, but all is good. Okay. <laughs> All right, good thing that didn't happen last week on my um, my Paint for Ukraine Zoom, which already had enough crazy things happen that day. Um, where am I? I'm in Santa Cruz, California. I would say it was pretty close to me. I don't know. Somebody will look that up. <laughs> Let me know where it was. <laughs> anyway, okay, back to the beginning of our show. It's Saturday. Um, I don't have any lights on right now in the art studio because when I turn on the light, it's just all yellow, but it is a little dark out there. But I'm, I have this little ring light, so when we do our painting, it should be all lit up. So you guys, today, here's what I wanna do. I've got lots to chat with you about, and I was thinking, similar to like when we were doodling, um, if you have any paper and you have some watercolors or even if you just have some markers and you just wanna draw along with me, I thought, you know, I'll chat with you and then I wanna just do some like painting with you and then it's sort of just like we can collectively do that together. I really think that's just a great way to just let out some emotions and wiggles and all that good stuff. And speaking of, doodling oh my goodness you guys the doodles that is that are coming through that you are sharing with me like I look at I usually at the end of the day when the kids are watching basketball and I'm sitting kind of like horizontal and I'm on my laptop I check out some of the posts and they are so gorgeous and the doodles they are so meditative. If anybody can go away with like a five minute, let me do this five minute art thing, doodling, literally get yourself a pad this big the next time you go to an art store, all right, this big, because it's easy to hold in your hand. Like you can literally just hold it like this and get yourself a black pen and when you're standing in line at the post office or you're standing in line at the grocery store or you're sitting uh, waiting in line or you're just sitting at home or you're feeling just so anxious about all of the things that are going on in the news, just start doing stuff like this. Just start doodling. Doesn't have to be beautiful. Doesn't have to be anything really. It's just lines. And then I see Terry and Kathy's work that they're putting up on the group. So if you guys haven't seen that, check it out. They have this next level of doodling that I looked up last night. I don't even know if I can pronounce it. <laughs> I need like somebody else to hop on and pronounce all my big words for me. Um, anyway, and it has a little bit more, um, I think, you know, not so much therapy, but there's some definitely 
meditative stuff going on with that too and that involves coloring and the lines connecting and that looks really awesome um, so definitely check out that but think about something like this um, you know you don't have to really bring a big sketchbook or art journal with you wherever you go but having this in your purse mm, it is a lifesaver okay so keep sharing your awesome doodles they're so they're so good and i just remember like two years ago when we were in the beginning of the pandemic that really helped everybody out i know that i got so much feedback from our group back then um i remember donna propis telling me like every day she'd spend hours <laughs> she's like hours doodling <laughs> and i just thought that was so awesome so all right and so that's my little doodle my little doodle comment i just love seeing them Okay, so I want to show you the flowers, you guys. So last week, what day is it today? Saturday, so last Sunday. So these are almost a week old. I bought these, believe it or not, at Trader Joe's. Okay, I showed them, I think, in, I did show one of them in my Instagram Live, and I've been posting them in my stories. But you guys, are these the most gorgeous tulips you've ever seen? what i'm gonna pull one out so you can see oh my gosh okay so these tulips are called peony tulips and i love peonies but my bunch okay so look how gorgeous my bunch of these they were eight dollars and they have brought me literally so much happiness this week i have them in a in a in a vase 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 and every day uh oh, I think we might have another one. Ooh, my roof, <laughs> my roof just creaked. All right, I'm just gonna control myself. <laughs> um, anyway, so the insides are like these, okay, you know that color I love, that deoxystine violet? This color is in the middle. Okay, so that's not black, that's like a deep purple. And then, just on the outside with the white. So my point, I guess my whole point is that, you know, I love to pick my own flowers when I can. And, but sometimes like don't give up on the grocery store flowers too. Especially if you um, have a Trader Joe's near you, they tend to have better flowers than like a Safeway or a big store. And for those in, in, um, Overseas, I'm sure you guys have just absolutely gorgeous flowers every corner of your street because you are in the beautiful locations and you probably have like a little place you can get flowers. But there is something about having flowers on your kitchen table that you can take a pause, just take a pause and look at the flowers and cut them, take them out of the water, cut them a little like a half inch, quarter inch, and put them back in and just enjoy them. And that's so important, you guys. It's so good. So I thought later we're gonna we're gonna paint these. And you can paint whatever flower you want. But I'm gonna be they have been inspiring me all week long. I love it. Love it, love it. Okay, so what let's see. I'm like doing my little checklist. All right, so what time? Let's <laughs> just whipped my I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit out of sorts after hearing the roof creak again. Um, okay, so you guys, the um, sunflowers, and I'm getting them through email, and I'm seeing them on my messages, and they are so so gorgeous. So I really appreciate all of you guys who have supported the two funds who are creating these sunflowers. Um, there's three paintings I have and I have found happy homes for all of them. And that's something that you guys could do too. Like if you know somebody from Ukraine or even Russia who, you know, we can't forget about so many people in Russia. They don't even want to be fighting. They don't even want part of this. They're just their country, unfortunately, is ruled by a really big, mean bully. So there may be Russian friends that you have. Like, think about those canvases are only eight by 10, and they're so easy to create and make. And just sending one out into the world is such a, uh, such a good thing. Um, so that class is still, it's gonna be up on my site for another month or so, and I think we're at like $2,300 we've raised, and it's 
awesome. And so thank you, thank you. And again, thank you for all the people who were on the replay, on the regular live who laughed with me. And the replay is available. So those who have signed up for the course, there was an email that went out that has a link to my website and a password. It's a private, it's a private page. So not everybody can hop on it. And all the videos were redone in high res. So you've got really nice videos because Zoom, as much as I love Zoom, I, I love Zoom for connecting with you guys, for seeing your faces, to be able to talk, to show your art on the screen. There's so many amazing qualities about Zooming. There's some technical problems with Zooming and their replay is really not always that crisp and that drives me crazy because I wish it was like nice and clear. So those uh, those replays are all redone. <laughs> I really didn't want to do that, but uh, I had no choice. Um, all right, so let's see. Oh, okay, one other thing about some of the posts that are coming through, you guys, where's, where's my, the, okay, hold on one second. Hold on the, this guy, Ready? The wings, oh, when I see the wings too, you guys, the wings and the doodles and the sunflowers, they make me so happy. Um, I am gonna send out, if I see you guys posting wings, I'll probably message you and ask you if I could use that image on my site and then just be able to promote the class because I'd love for, of course, people to buy that class. And if you would be so kind to write a review, I would love you guys because it really helps me. Um, okay. All right. We are going to paint. Oh, and I have two. I have another little announcement. Hi, Lorna. I have another little announcement. There's two things that I have been working on really hard since I launched the Bird of Humanity class. We did our sunflower class. I was sort of trying to like clear the decks a little bit. I have been working on two different programs that I'm introducing to my site. One is coaching, and that is one-on-one -on -one coaching with people who need some help and guidance in either creative, in their art, in their creative you know, life and paintings and drawings and all that good stuff, and then the other is in business. And so my brain is equally, gets equally excited about both um creative stuff and business stuff and so that has been launched on my site and those are one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions and you can find that on my website and the other thing i have been doing which i am so excited about is i have been creating this series called the creative side hustle series and the first course is going to be a little bit bigger than some of the other ones but the first course is going to be the 10 places, the 10 places where you can sell your gifts, your art, your whatever you create, whatever you um, have inspired to do, services, whatever, is 10 places. And it's everything from Etsy to art, art markets to Facebook to Instagram to um, coffee shops to open studios. So I have been doing like this big brain dump and I have a few more weeks to like work on that and I will, you guys will be the first to hear about it. And I know the majority of you guys who are listening and watching me aren't even like there. They're like, that, that's not me. And that's fine. I just wanted, my heart felt a calling to teach people what I learned. And I learned by figuring it all out and doing it and researching and blah, blah, blah. And I just want to give people the down and dirty how to do it. And so I thought I would turn that into a series of classes. So that has been, that's been going on too. <laughs> so I have been busy, but for everybody who is like, you know what, I just want to paint. I don't want to do any of that. I am here for you twice a week, always will be Facebook lives on Saturdays and I have been Wednesday afternoons well it's not really afternoons at all it's 11 o'clock now Wednesdays and on Instagram and I am still in my head thinking of all new classes that are our classes too so okay that was a lot of chit chat before we even started working all right so I'm gonna turn this camera around and I'm going to 
also show you what I've been doing in the Instagram group just so you kind of feel included. All right, hold on. One second. Okay. The rain has stopped. Chill. I don't know about the Zoom right now. Probably not because um, I had so much technical difficulties with the sunflower one. I pro you know what, you guys? I'm going to show you that Instagram art I'm working on when I turn it around because it's very vertical and this is horizontal. We're going to go right to our tulips. So, Jill, until I figure out and get my all the cameras working, I'm going to put that on hold. But that doesn't mean I'm not going to do them because I really enjoy doing them. And Zoom works. It just only worked for one of my cameras, so that's not the best. Um, okay, so here's what I have, you guys. I have been working and playing around with these tulips. I'm going to put a couple tulips here. All right, and I'm just gonna flip through kind of and talk about my inspiration. Um, all right, so this is a journal that I made from the journaling, art journaling Zoom class. Okay, so this is one of my paint, my journals I did. Like I just did a few of them. This is one of them. So I think this is probably, I don't know, maybe 12 inches by six. I'm just guessing. And it's watercolor paper. It is 140 pound hot press. And so this was a, this was a spread I did. Let me make sure it's in focus. This was a spread I did um, in acrylics. This is all acrylics right now. And that's not what I'm going to do today, but I had these and this was the inspiration for that big piece of raw canvas that I'm still working on. And I started playing around this week, every day. I just kind of went in and started playing around with watercolor. The reason why I like watercolor is sometimes I just don't feel like I'm in the mood to like bring out all of my paints and acrylics and everything. I feel like, you know, sometimes I just need to chill out and spend 30 minutes or 40 minutes painting. And it's very relaxing to me. I've got all my paints right next to me. I can just kind of go. I have no idea what I'm gonna do. When I sit down to paint in watercolors in a playful way like this, I really don't have an idea. I just know that I wanna be inspired by the flowers and the colors and probably the shapes. And that's really about it. And I had sat down that day to paint the sunflowers. So this was supposed to be sunflowers. And then when I was <laughs> painting it, I reversed the blue and the yellow. And I was like, oh, okay, well, that's okay. It's not really sunflowers to look at it, but there's a little bit of some floral representation here. You can see a little bit of there. I've got some hearts down here. I just thought it was really sweet. And when I'm working like this too, sometimes there's so much water happening on my paper that I'll grab one of these guys and just start playing around with some shapes. So like for instance, that day, I had the yellow and the blue on my brush and I just started making this kind of fun little abstract. And I just thought that was just so sweet, you know, just the way it is. And a lot of times too, you know, this type of a little exercise can make you think, hmm, this actually might be a really beautiful abstract for a much bigger canvas. And I really like the composition and I like those two colors. So I'm gonna play around with that next time I do a big canvas. So you really just don't know what your sketching is. And I said that this was sketching and somebody's like, that's sketching? And to me it is sketching because when I'm working this way, I know that I'm not gonna hang any of this art up. I'm not going to sell this art. This is just me playing. So I call it sketching, you know, with watercolors. So you could, you know, think of it like, is it's just very loose and easy. Um, easy meaning that it not might not necessarily be easy to do, but just easy flowing. You know, it's just kind of, I'm just chilling and doing it. So inside this sketchbook, I had put, 
uh, one of these sheets of paper. And do you guys remember, anybody who has done art for a long time remembers all the design markers? And do you guys remember these pads? This is the Graphics 360 it's from Ben Fang, and it's rag translucent marker paper. So you didn't get any bleeding. I remember having this in college. And anyway, it's great paper if you want to do a lot of marker work. It's great for people who are illustrators or fashion designers. They use this type of uh, paper a lot when they're just kind of like sketching out their, you know, dresses and whatnot. But I also love it just to put inside a journal page. And so this, I had no idea what it was going to look like <laughs> with watercolor, because I usually don't use watercolor. And you can see it's got some, you know, uh, rippling looks to it and some watermarks. But here's the thing. I can now take this, these two pages, and I could go in with collage pieces. I could go in with um, so many different little pen. I could go over it with some black pen and some um, Posca pens and fill it in and do all sorts of stuff. But it was just fun to kind of see like, huh, that's kind of interesting. I think there's some potential there and it was like neat to do. And so anyway, I thought, that would be kind of cool. So I don't know if I would watercolor um, this side. I think I would probably maybe collage this side or even do acrylic paints on this side. Anyway, it's all kind of just a fun little, looks like um, tea stained almost, doesn't it? It has like an old vintage look. So then yesterday I was playing around with this side and I was really just looking at this tulip and I'm and I'm looking from the underneath part and just playing around with like that shape, sort of like a half cup shape and just sort of different sizes, working with pinks and oranges and then sort of working in the background. And I think what I'm going to do is, I won't do this one today, but I think what I'm going to do is now I have, you know, a bunch of watercolor down I think I'm gonna go back over it with more watercolor and intentionally go over some of the color that's below. And so a couple things are going to happen. It may bleed, but if I do it light enough, if I do it really, really light, actually, let me just show you real quick. It's gonna probably smush over to that side, but I don't really care. I just wanna show you what I'm talking about. Let me just bring it down a little bit. So, I want to go back in with a blue and I haven't been able to find the blue I want yet, but I will show you. Let's see. I've got, I'm going to scooch this up. Scooch, scooch. Okay. I'm just going to go in here. This is some Daniel Smith blue. Let's see. All right, here we go. I'm not going to um, try to get too much water on my brush, even though I just did. <laughs> anyway, but I would go in and go over some of my brush strokes. And so let me show you, let me scooch it down even more. What I'm not doing is I'm not painting and rubbing it in. I'm I'm literally doing like this layer over. And what's going to happen is and then I would leave it. I wouldn't touch it again. And you're going to get all that gorgeousness be behind it start to pop through a little bit right here and here. And so it gives you another like layer of color without it all bleeding. And so I have to really be patient because I really wanted to do that yesterday and I needed to wait for this, all of this to really be dry. And it's watercolor, so if I took my brush and I went in and I really rubbed on that orange, it's going to come off or it's going to spread. That's, it's not acrylic, so it is going to spread. But I really like the effect of layering with watercolors. In my watercolors and bloom class, I do this a lot, where you layer with watercolors and then you get a whole second set of colors underneath. And so then I just really need to let that dry. And so I'm gonna see what happens. I might do that over the weekend 
and then I'll show you guys. All right, let me scooch back up again, get a new page, and show you what else I did. Um, and then here, these two I worked on earlier in the week. So this is just, I don't know, like a whole bunch of color happening here. And then these were tulips that I had that weren't these ones from Trader Joe's. This was another set of tulips I had. I think I had like two or three of them in a, in a bouquet. And I just love like the shape of some of the traditional ones. And I was just sort of playing around. And I am going to, so that's going to come over here on this side. So I thought today I would just have fun messing around and I'm going to work on the cover. So I'm just going to take this journal and put it like that. Just play around with you guys for a little bit. Okay, let me scooch up. Okay, so let's first, first I'm gonna get a big brush. This is just, I don't even know what kind of brush this is. I just grabbed it, a big brush, and I'm gonna put down some water. Now when I watercolor, I do lots of different ways. Sometimes I don't put any water down, and sometimes I put, um, a lot of water down is all fun it's all to just experiment and so what i'm going to do is i'm doing those half kind of well they're not even half but they're like a cup and all i am thinking about is the side version of this just as inspiration not for anything really else it's not i'm not trying to make a tulip that looks like this i'm just using it for inspiration and what inspires me is the shapes. So I'm just putting the water, you probably can't see that water, you might be able to see a little bit of it. And I'm just gonna grab a half inch brush. And of course I'm gonna go find some yummy pink. So I have that opera. Cornacridome here and I'm just gonna go in get a little bit of water on my brush and just start putting some color down oh my goodness isn't that color delicious and when I'm painting this way it really is not about the flower at all anymore it's about looking at the color and it's about looking at the shape and watching it flow. It really, I mean, look how gorgeous that is. And so when people talk about the process of not really caring what your final outcome is gonna look like, that's where all the beauty lies, just having fun. Just mushing it around. So obviously these tulips are really about an abstract kind of tulip. They're not anything else. And I think when you work in an abstract way, a lot of people, a lot of artists have an idea, a subject in mind for their inspiration. And mine usually are flowers, maybe landscape. That's just a nice big pink <laughs> blob. <laughs> so I'm just gonna add some pink to these other ones down here. And I always try to do little sizes too, little guys, not all the same size. And then this would be one without any water underneath. Let's put it right here. Well, it doesn't really look any different, but I think for me personally, 
when I'm painting in a playful way, I actually enjoy seeing it flow into the water. <laughs> so that's my own personal thing. And I think what I'll do too, is I think I'll have this big one carry over to the other side. Thinking about if I want, I think I want one up here too. So while this is while this is wet, I want to add in with another brush some orange. So I'm going to dip my brush in there. I'm thinking about what orange. Let's see. I've got this little set, this Pima set. Oopsie. I can't remember what color this is. This might be actually too yellow. Yeah, I don't want to use that one. Okay, so I've got some orange in here. And I love the way orange is, I love the way orange is with pink. Yeah, I have to be careful though, because I can turn it into brown pretty easily. So let's see if this is the, this is the orange that I liked. And I'm just going to put a little bit in these flowers without really painting over the pink because I can easily get to muddy colors that way. I'm going in next to it. Just a tiny bit. And so let's say I'm looking at this thinking, okay, that's that's pretty wet, you know. What I'll do then is I will grab this little notebook and just sort of think about, okay, what do I like? Do I like this shape? And play around with the shape. and the colors that's already on my brush even. I love these angle shader brushes. I know I talk about it in all my classes, but I really do like how you can lift it up on the side and then push it down and just get some gorgeous lines. Isn't that so fun? Oh my God. Now it's harder to do this with acrylics because the watercolor is just so loose. It just it's just easier for me to kind of get the shapes. Unless I was working with really a lot of high flow and inks, then I could do it with the inks. But I'm talking about the thicker watercolor paints. Oh, you know what I'm gonna try? Okay, I'm gonna do a little experiment. <clears throat> I have this fancy light. Let's see if it brightens it. Mm, I don't like how it's shiny though. Mm. Oh, huh. Did you see something? Oh. It's so bright on my eyes. I don't know if I like that. All right, we're going back to just au naturel. Okay, so anyway, this is a great idea to just have. And then, okay, so then what you could do is you have these pieces of paper with all of these. Like, this is my favorite. Oh, I love this so much. Um, so I probably would just leave that because I think it's so pretty. But... Let's say, let me show you another one I was doing. I was just working on leaves, you know, when I was doing my tulips last week. 
But then you could take your black pen and just doodle over these leaves. So watercolors are pretty awesome for this kind of stuff. You know, it's, it's, thin, it's thin, it's not like this big thick stuff on your paper. So taking a waterproof, waterproof is key, pen, and then literally doodling and drawing lines and just creating that. So when you're, when, when you're working this way and you have extra paint or it's wet and you wanna just kind of put it aside, then try popping it over a little bit onto a little sketchbook like that. And this is not a, I just wanted you guys to know too, this sketchbook, it's really not for paint, it's for dry stuff. But I think if you just use it lightly, like that's, look, it's fine. It's totally fine. I just don't think you can be putting, you know, acrylic paint on there. All right, so another thing you can do and that I've done before too is take your paper towel if you want to go into some areas that you felt were just too watery or maybe it turned brown and you didn't like the way that looked, you can go in and just pull up some of these colors, which is kind of fun to do. Okay, and then let's see, what else do I want to do on here? I'm going to add some green and when i'm working like this you can see i'm not going over the color so much now i really would like that to dry that could be pretty or that could end up being pretty brown all right so grab another one of these brushes little angle shader tulip leaves are so beautiful they're so beautiful, so many different reasons. One, I love that color. The color is absolutely stunning. And also the shape and the line work, even the lines of the stem. Whoops, all right, put that there. And I already had some water with green in it, so I'm just gonna go in. And on this piece, on this one, I think I'm not gonna, I'm not worried about having every tulip have a stem or have a leaf, but I do want there to be some on the bottom. So I'm just going to go right for it and add some green. Green leaves and I'm going to turn my brush. And again, I'm not really trying to do the exact tulip leaf, but just something to represent the greenery. I'm sort of looking with my eye, like where's a good place to go? <laughs> I don't know if I want one right up the middle, so. I don't know what that is, but anyway, you can just keep adding lots of little lines and marks and this green just represents all of the, the stems and things like that. What green is it? Isn't that green amazing? That green is one of my favorite greens. It is by M. Graham and Company. I've had it forever and it's called Permanent Green Pale, okay? No idea where I got it, but I, I think I have, must have had a little set because I d definitely, oh no, this is, this is gouache, never mind. <laughs> but I, I bought this one individually, I think. I don't think it was a set, but it's the same company as this gouache set I have. That's a whole nother, that's a whole nother day topic little piece of hair in there but this is my go-to green I really 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 love it all right so 
M. Graham Company. Uh, permanent pale, green pale. And it is almost the exact same color, whoops, of these tulips. So I'm gonna do one more little thing. What time is it? Oh, I've got some time. I'm going to add some purple in here. I'm taking a really small, just taking a real small brush. And I'm gonna go in to this purple. And now I'm thinking about, you know, the purples that was right in there. Oh, and you know what I was gonna show you? Let me see if I can find it real quick. You guys, look at this tulip. How crazy is that? Look at that um, petal that didn't either quite make it onto the flower or it's a leaf. <laughs> can you see how cool that is? A little stripe. So that could be a whole inspirational part of your painting too. Like you could look at this flower and think, oh, look at these stripes. I'm going to start putting some stripes somewhere. And it just represents that flower, even though no one would know why the heck you got stripes on your tulips. But now you know. All right. So I'm going to, I've got some water. And all I'm going to do is start to do a little bit of line work little accents that's all that is like that's gonna end up bleeding so I just wanted to do a little bit line work and I could certainly do this when the tulips are dry but I just wanted to add a little bit you could also at this point oh it's sunny now <laughs> the weather's all over the place at some point you could even, um, I have some wet purple on my brush and flick it. That's probably my most fun. Flick, 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 flick. And then let that totally dry and then go over a little bit with some more detail work. It really is just about messing around. Spending 30 minutes. All right, I wanna show you this color. That's that um, Daniel Smith, look how expensive it was a few years ago. This I probably bought this literally six or seven years ago. It's probably like 20 bucks right now. <laughs> so watercolors last a long time. And I must have been with my mom and we think, I think we think we thought we needed it. I don't know if I really did, but actually I think I just mixed this with something else. So. Let's see if I can do a pure color for you. I have it right there. Isn't that pretty? So I'm gonna go into some of these areas that I just have white. Now the thing about this color is that it's a tiny bit sticky for me. It might be because it's so old. And I think that I was hoping it would be a little bit more blue, but it is really pretty. It's like a green blue. And in the light, it will have a little bit of a shimmer to it. So that's that color. You can't really tell until it was dry. I'm not crazy in love with it and it's probably because it's not bright enough for me. <laughs> I'm looking for like a nice blue, brilliant turk. I'm looking for this in watercolors. That's what I'm looking for. And I, I don't happen to have one right now in front of me. I think I might have one in my big set. So, but for now, that's okay. Um, I have this other one, this other blue. Yeah, I'm not crazy about that color either. So what I would do at this point is I would probably just let this 
sort of dry before I keep mucking around with it. I'm gonna flip this around and, and chat with you and show you this. I'm gonna show you this other piece I'm working on. So hold on one second. Oh, we are going backwards again. Hold on, I always do this backwards. Hello, <laughs> it's like, I always do that every time <laughs> backwards. Um, yeah, that blue is a duochrome, um, duochrome luminescent aquamarine. Aquamarine. I never even told you guys the color, <laughs> so sorry about that. Okay. Anyway, um, so the thing about the watercolors to me, the way I paint is like that was what 15, 20 minutes, and then. I will not work on it anymore until it's completely dry and then layer in more colors. That's just the way I work because I very quickly can turn things to mud. And it's because I don't have a lot of patience and I've been really working on that with my acrylic painting and with my watercolor painting. I really try to be like, okay, I gotta step away or go outside or go water something just so that it gives it the time to dry and kind of settle. Because try painting with watercolors and layer your colors by letting each layer dry a little bit. Just try it, see what you guys think and let me know. Um, okay, so I wanna show you this other painting and then I'm gonna pull one of our Gabrielle Bernstein cards before we leave today. Um, okay. So this is an acrylic piece that is the same size as the Bird of Humanity wing. So 22 by eight. And this is something that I've been doing on Instagram. So on Instagram Lives, I go in and paint each week on this piece for literally 30 minutes, that's it. And I try not to paint on it during the week. <laughs> well, I'm kind of too busy, but I try not to paint on it. Sometimes I look over and like, oh, like, I want to add a little thing. So this last week, I worked on this section here. And it's so fun. And the whole time I'm working on it, I'm thinking flowers. I'm thinking this is like, you know, super bloom, um, even though super blooms like more like the orange and the lighter colors for springtime but it doesn't matter it's like what I think in my head is like I want to have these like bursts of meadowy looking flowers so you can see like I've got like lots of little tiny tiny marks and some bigger marks and then I have these clusters of these and then I'll probably end up having some more up here so my thought is that you guys wouldn't this make an awesome scarf so my thought is to get this one done and the blue one over there with the, the big blue beautiful one and add those to my silk scarf collection besides the wings of love, which I'll keep always. Um, so I was really happy with this. <laughs> I'm really happy with that one. Um, we'll see if I don't muck it up. And okay, so I wanna pull a card for you guys and I just wanna also say something. I think it's important for us creative people, all right? And um, it's sometimes really hard as an artist and a positive person. I consider myself a half full, positive, happy, joyful person. I always have felt like that. Sometimes it's hard to want to be like that when the world is at a really hard place. And that's why I really want to talk about for a minute is that it's okay, especially as artists and creative people and you want to express yourself and I just happen to love bright, beautiful colors. I'm not a moody artist. I'm one who wants to express happiness and love and joy. And some people might be like, uh, I'm not, I'm, no, we can't be like that. We need to be showing we're sad and we're hurt and we're really upset. And that is something that I really worked through with the pandemic. And at first it took me a while to feel like, oh, I can't be happy. There's this horrible thing happening to our whole entire world. How could I be happy? But the more I, the more I kind of flipped the switch on that mindset and became, wait a minute, that's not me. I want to be who I am. 
I believe that creating art and being joyful and sharing that beauty is sending out a very powerful message to the world and it's it's a healing to me and i think it heals people i think it makes people happier and i think that is a contagious thing that means that you're gonna spread that and they're gonna spread that and they're gonna spread that even though we are all in this hurtful place right now um, watching all of the tragedies unfold that doesn't mean we don't care with all the love in our heart about what's happening and we want to help it I just want you to know as um, if you are struggling like I am about like how do I act happy and want to paint beautiful things when this is happening you can do both there's always light there's always dark there's always joy, there's always pain, but you can do both. And I choose to look at that as wanting to bring more joy into the world because that I believe will help other people. So that's just my little, that's like my little, what do you call it? Soapbox on that. Um, but I wanted to share that with you because I think it's important. It took me a while to figure that out, okay? And so anyway, that's my love to you guys so that you do it too. All right, so this is from... Um, the spirit chunky Gabrielle Bernstein. I know we're backwards, but this is the set that Kathy bought me and it is awesome. So I thought I would pull a card from that for us today that will carry us through the weekend. So I'm not lucky. And the sun is out and I just saw a hawk flew by. And I don't know if you guys ever knew the story about my mom-in-law who passed away, who I have a lot of big, heavy stories and heartful like she's here in the studio, uh, just flew right in front of me, literally right outside the window as I was telling you that. Isn't that so cool? And every time I see a hawk, I say, hello, Anna. Hello. <laughs> okay, here is our card. Here's our card. I'm gonna read it to you guys. Compassion is my compass. I am willing to hold space for the experience of others. Isn't that so awesome? Oh my God, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> it's such a great card. These cards are so, so beautiful. Compassion is my compass. I'm willing to hold space for the experience of others. And I know you guys all feel the same in this group. You guys are the best. I love you so much. And I am so grateful to each and every one of you to tune in on Saturdays, to just spend this time with me. And it lights me up. And then I'm like, oh my gosh, a whole week went by. <laughs> so I'm sending you guys so much love, okay? I want you to try and spend five, 10 minutes being creative. And can you show them again? The cards, yes. Let me show you guys the cards again. There's three, I'm gonna, wait, don't go anywhere. Okay, hold on, I'm gonna show you. Um, so you guys, these decks, these two decks, I have three decks. I'll tell you all about them. My sister inspired me. Oh wait, I gotta show you my funny pants. Wait, ready? Look at my pants. Hold on, they're waves. <laughs> it's like, you know, doing those Zoom classes and you don't know what's on the bottom, but no, I have these cute leggings. Um, okay, so these are three decks by Gabrielle Bernstein. And she is a wonderful, beautiful, spiritual woman. Oprah Winfrey called her one of the most influential, mindful speakers of her that generation, which she's, I think she's a bit younger than me. Let's just say <laughs> we're the same generation. Um, sort of the next thought leader. So Gabrielle Bernstein, you can find her anywhere. She has her own site. She's on Instagram. She's on Facebook. She does speaking gigs. She has classes, but she also has these art decks, uh, not art decks, but spiritual decks, mindful decks. And the artwork on there is from a woman named Michaela Ezra. And her, the artwork, you guys, is just as incredible as what is said. Now, I realize that we're flipped on the camera, but you guys get the gist how gorgeous these are. And so the idea of these decks is that if you come in, if you come into your art space, and this could be literally at your dining room table, on, in, outside, in the kitchen, 
and you pull a card, and you can pull a card every day when you even wake up, you could pull 10 cards in a day, you know, and you pull a card and you just look at it, and there's a lot of times that the universe has your back, is that the universe knows what card you should be pulling, and there's something in that message that's really important for you to listen to. So there's three decks I have. This one is called The Universe Has Your Back. This was the first one I got, my sister bought it for me, and they're, again, they're just like beautiful. Oh, there's so many too. I think there is, let me just check. Do, do, do. Oh, I want to say there's at least probably, oh yeah, 52 in each deck. All right. So this is The Universe Has Your Back. I believe this is her first one. This one is called Super Attractor. So my sister bought me this one, um, which I love because I'm all into law of attraction if you haven't figured that out by now and um when i'm tuned in to the energy of abundance i become abundant love that and then this one is the newer one kathy got me this spirit junkie which is the one i just read from you and again like 52 gorgeous gorgeous cards and then i gotta show you something my sister made me um so when she gave me the deck she took this frame, which I've had to tape. So this was like just a, a frame and um, she probably got it like Target or something. And um, she put this clip in. She's a little DIY girl. She put this clip in and then when I pull a card, I'll just put it right here for me to look at in my studio and I have this on my deck. I, I have this on my, my table right here by my candle. So they're awesome, you know, and if you know anybody who's having like, maybe they're having a hard time or maybe they're trying to get into some sort of a practice of being more mindful, these are great gifts. They're not that expensive and they're a great gift and you can buy them in so many different places. So I know, isn't that frame so adorable? I know she's so cute when she puts those things together. Like I can... <laughs> think about that. Um, okay, you guys, mwah! I love you and I will see you next Saturday and we're still in March. I hope you guys have a fantastic week and stay creative, okay? Mwah! Bye!